A rational function is a quotient of two polynomial functions. The denominator should have a degree of 1 or more. So f of x equals 3x minus 7 over x squared plus 8x plus 5. That's a polynomial divided by a polynomial, and so this is a rational function. g of x equals 5 divided by 2x minus 8. Well, 5 is a polynomial of degree 0. 2x minus 8 is a first degree polynomial, so this is a rational function. h of x equals x over 5. Since we want our denominator to have degree 1 or more, this is not considered a rational function. And similarly, h of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x. Square root is not a polynomial, so this is not a rational function. The simplest rational function is going to be the simplest zero degree polynomial, 1, divided by the simplest first degree polynomial, x. So our simplest rational function, f of x equals 1 over x. And we can graph it. And we plot a few billion points, and we get something that looks like this. And notice our graph gets very close to the y-axis and very close to the x-axis. We say that the x and y axes are asymptotes, and y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And x equals 0, well, this one's vertically, so let's call this uh, an up and down asymptote. Uh, let's call it a vertical asymptote. Now, these terms are geometric terms, so the question is, what is very close algebraically? And so we might make the following observation. We get close to the y-axis if we go to the far, 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 far right, or to the far, 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 far left. Now, points that are close to the y-axis have y values that are close to 0. And points to the far, 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 far right have very large and positive x values. So we write it this way. y goes to 0 as x goes to infinity where the infinity symbol represents the idea that however big a number we have, we'll make it larger. Now, more commonly, we like to think about x as our independent variable. x does something and y follows suit. So we more commonly write this as x goes to infinity, y goes to 0. Similarly, if we go to the far, 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 far left, our y values get close to 0. The x-coordinates will be large but negative. And so we write y goes to 0 as x goes to negative infinity. And again, we like to put our x values first. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to 0. What about x equals 0, our vertical asymptote? Notice that to get close to x equals 0, you must have a very large, positive or negative, y value. So we could say x goes to 0 as y goes to infinity. And we could say x goes to 0 as y goes to negative infinity. But we don't. And the reason is that we like to think about y as a function. And here we see that as x is going to 0, y does two completely different things, and we don't like that. So we'll introduce a little bit more notation. If x is close to 0, but slightly more than 0, then we're in this portion of the graph. And so y is a very large and positive. And so we might write as x goes to 0 but stays a little bit more, that's our plus, y goes to infinity. And likewise, if x is close to 0 but slightly less than 0, then y is very large but negative. And so we write this as x goes to 0 but stays a little less, that's our minus, y goes to minus infinity. 
Now, you might wonder if we're being inconsistent. And the answer is yes. We should write as x goes to infinity, y goes to 0, but stays a little bit more. And similarly, as x goes to minus infinity, y goes to 0 and stays a little bit less. And we should do this, but in practice, we don't. Now let's combine these ideas with our horizontal and vertical translations. So the graph shown is a horizontal and vertical translation of y equals 1 over x. Let's find the equation. So notice that our graph does have two asymptotes, x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Now, since a vertical and horizontal translation will also move the asymptotes, we can draw the graph of y equals 1 over x and its asymptotes. So y equals x has a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. So first, we'll shift our graph horizontally to the right by 3 units. And that puts the vertical asymptote in the right place. We also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So to get that in the right place, we need to shift down by 2 units. And so this graph is produced by a horizontal shift of 3 units to the right, producing the graph of y equals 1 divided by x minus 3. Then we apply a vertical shift of 2 units downward, producing the graph of y equals 1 divided by x minus 3 minus 2.